So, yeah, hello. Yeah. So, we have gone to college together. I understand that recently you have um, you've gone to Japan on the jet program. Flown the coop. I am in the land of the rising sun. It's very nice. Fantastic. The eagle has landed. Um, and so <laughs> where are you specifically in Japan? Specifically, I am on a teeny little island off the coast of Nagasaki Prefecture called Iki Island. Iki Island. And yes. so, so you're essentially, so you're not on the mainland. You're in a little island off the coast. Um, how, are you, yeah. how are you liking it? I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I love it so much. Um, I just, I feel a part of the community. I feel like I'm an active member here. I have part of, I'm in a taiko drum club, which is really fun. Yeah. It's, it's me, one other ALT, and four old people and who are in like their 80s. That's beautiful. And it's, it's awesome. Wow. It's so, oh, I just like, I am overcome with it's very wholesome. Um, wholesome wholesome yeah there it is there it is incredibly wholesome incredibly wholesome feeling uh and hopefully i'll be able to do a concert with them soon but yeah no it's awesome i love it i love it here there's a big stigma about people being sent off to like different islands and not being on the mainland or around one of the bigger cities and them uh not really having a good time from what i'm hearing from you and from some other people that i talked to uh whether they're in the countryside or on an island, they've really enjoyed their time regardless. So it's good to see that you're uh, having a good time over there. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I mean, I wouldn't say I'm actually very far from a big city. Uh, Fukuoka, the biggest city in Kyushu, mm -hmm. about one and a half million, it's only an hour boat ride from the oh, island. Okay. So it's like I can get a getaway. And I just did that this weekend, this past weekend for the first time. And the experience of going from the hustle, bustle, intensity of the city and coming to an island where it's just silence, just silence. Like you can hear an eagle screeching in the distance. You're walking along a canal and you see a crane just swoop down a bridge. Yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. You're making me a little bit jealous because um, the whole thing that happened recently with the border shutting down. So hopefully yeah. we're, we're holding on to hope that uh, – was supposed to go out in March of next year, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll see what happens. But it's good to know that I have friends on the inside. Yeah. Okay, so Gabe, you know, I think one of the biggest questions that I wanted to ask you today was why Japan? Of all places in the world, you could have gone, right? Why Japan? Yeah. Great question. You know, it's a great question, and it's a question I've been asked many times in my life. I mean, I am a Japanese major. So I, I dedicated my like, most of my college learning to Japanese culture. But it started from a very young age. I went to a cool uh, elementary school in Portland called Richmond Elementary. Uh, and they taught Japanese half the day and English the other half of the day. So from kindergarten to third grade, I learned uh, Japanese. And it, was, I, it must have affected me. Somehow, because <laughs> I continued, I read manga from fourth grade to the end of high school. I got into college, was like, what do I want to study? And it was like, Japanese is right there. Uh, it just seemed to kind of just all happen very naturally. You know, I mean, I, I could have definitely gone somewhere else, but I felt like I needed to live in Japan to make sure my language got to a fluent level. Because gotcha. if... If I did all the work that's involved in like getting a Japanese major, and then I just like got some office job in God knows where that was in Japan, I would have just wasted all that time and all that just important necessary work that I did. Okay, so, so uh, for the viewers, I have a few questions that uh, some some people have asked me to ask you, and I was hoping I could rattle them off, and that you could uh, tell me your best answer for them all right the first Absolutely. one comes from this piece of paper any suggestions that you would have on what to bring or what you'd really need or miss as soon as you came over to japan um you know it's gonna sound basic as f but a nice towel like honestly like 
I don't think they make towels in Japan like they do in America, where it wraps around your entire body and then some. Uh, and if you do find those huge towels, they're expensive. But I think it really depends on the person. Like if you eat a lot of spicy food, it's going to be harder to find spices here. So bring spices, bring sriracha, bring that stuff. If you're a clean freak, they have all the cleaning supplies. Skincare is amazing. Makeup is awesome. I feel like the only thing you can't really find in Japan is like spices because they don't really do spicy food here. I heard also like deodorant was very low yeah. quality quality or quantity of it's, it's the same with the toothpaste there's not a level high level of fluoride as there is so it tastes different uh you get used to it and you can order that toothpaste on amazon i heard that amazon in japan is different than in, than in the united states is that is that true i haven't ordered anything from amazon yet i don't think so though i know uh during my two-week quarantine in tokyo we had a lot of jets order like constantly from amazon and got delivered to the hotel uh so it's like yeah i think it's it's pretty much the same gotcha how's the community around uh, the jet program i hear it's pretty close yeah i mean especially depending on the prefecture you know i think if you live in tokyo that's sort of going to be a lot more wide and less close but here, here there's uh, about five other alts on the island four and not including me uh, and we're really tight, we're really tight together. We get, uh, every Friday we get ALT curry. We go out to this restaurant, we eat curry together. Yeah, it's tasty, tasty as fuck. Um, and we go to the different bars. We went to Fukuoka together. Beautiful. So I, it's pretty nice. What, uh, where are the other ALTs from? Are they from the United States as well? Yeah, I mean, in terms of statistics, the JET program accepts around 5,000 people every year. Mm-hmm. And 3,000 of those, just Americans. So there's a lot of Americans here. Yeah. The other ALTs, they're all Americans. One, two, one from Michigan, one from Illinois, one from Texas, and one from California. And oh I'm from God, Oregon. from all over the United States. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, and apparently specific schools can request specific states. So my friend from California, who's, outside of, who's from outside of San Diego, uh, replaced somebody that was from the same town she was from. So ask them for a quick run through from the time of their arrival into Japan to the day they actually started teaching at the school. What was the process like? Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, okay, so the first day I left, it was, it was Halloween Eve, October 30th. And I uh, woke up at 3.30 in the morning got to the airport at 4.30. They give you all these documents. You have to make go through this check, this check, this check. And then you wait at the gate. You get on your plane. You go to Seattle. And then you transfer because there's not a direct flight from Portland to, gotcha. to uh, Japan. But uh, you get on your flight to Narita Airport. That's a nine-hour flight. Uh, and then when you get off the plane, that's when the fun starts. I had to take COVID test before I got there, before I got there, before I left. And I had to have all these papers with me. I had a, had a, a QR code. And um, we went through the airport and we waited in lines for hours, okay. going from one station to the next station to the next station. And I took another COVID test, which was a spit test. Uh, I don't know if you take, they give you like a vial and you have to spit in it till it's like half full. So you're just like, oh for like two minutes or something, you're in this corner of this room just <laughs> and it's so weird uh and then you go you wait for it to be negative you continue you go through customs all that all that rigmarole you get your residency card your zairyo card and then after that you finally get your luggage you get on the bus to the hotel and you're in the hotel for two weeks you hang out just in chill. your room in the hotel you just chill uh you go through orientation videos just like something for you to like be occupied, to be busy. Uh, you socialize with people. Honestly, depending on what hotel you're placed in, it can be a very different environment. Some people weren't allowed out of their rooms at all, at all. Uh, and I could just leave my room whenever and go to the convenience store in the hotel whenever I wanted. But you couldn't leave the premises of the hotel. Makes sense. Uh, I, I heard about one story where somebody, they got there, they were there for two days, 
and they bought a ticket to Sapporo and left the hotel. And they, they were immediately like, like, okay, you're completely canceled. You're done. You, you're deported back to America. Uh, so yeah, you just kind of hang out for two weeks and it depends, it depends what type of person you are. So I knew some people that just slept and played video games the whole time. Some people were literally like biting their nails and being like, this is utter hell. <laughs> uh, I, I was just chilling. Like we had like a nice hotel room and a bath and I was like, this is sick. This is sick. So it was just chilling for two weeks, but it was actually like really great because typically Without the coronavirus, you'd be like going to business meetings, business conventions for three days, 10 hours a day, just constantly, constantly being just just in your face with information and then immediately go to your prefecture and start your new life. But this way, for two weeks, I got to, first of all, like adjust to the time zone difference oh, that's amazing. and the jet lag and the jet. Once I got there, I was like, I'm fresh. I'm ready to go. Let's do this. So after quarantine was over, we got on a plane, I got to my prefecture, I got to my island, and then I kind of just like set up my hotel, I got my, or I set up my apartment, I got my car, I started the water, gas, electric, uh, bank account, all this stuff took like two days. And then I got to my, uh, my junior high school. So did you take a boat? to the island or did you fly there? I flew from uh, Narita Airport to Nagasaki Airport and it's only a 30 minute flight from my island to Nagasaki. When was your first day of school? Was it absolutely the next day or was it like in a couple days? It was a couple days. After I got everything pretty much squared away and I had my own car and I could drive myself to school is when I started. Gotcha. Uh, and my first day was amazing. Like amazingly crazy. Just like... I, I, my first introduction in the morning was all the students gathered for an assembly in the gym. They were standing in single file rows waiting for me to give a speech. And I gave my speech in Japanese and everyone said I did a good job. I don't know. It was like, kind of, I was like, uh, the person who was introducing me said all the information I was going to use before I went on. So I had to improvise a whole speech in my head. And I was like, oh, yeah, I love ramen and climbing mountains, and I love your island, and it's beautiful. I'm going to be a great teacher. Yeah, all that, all that stuff. Did you yeah. actually do any teaching that day, or was it? Uh, it was mostly just kind of hanging out in class, uh, watching the other teachers teach, um, which is kind of what I do. It's, I'm an assistant to the teacher. Gotcha. So uh, unless the teacher wants me to do lesson plans, I don't. I just kind of like, this is how you say sausage, or that doesn't sound right. Okay, so you, how long have you been there so far? Like how, how you've been? Now? I've been in Japan for five weeks. I've been on the island for three. Like any any moving that you're gonna do between countries, there's always gonna be things that shock you or that are new or, you know. So what what were some like, you know culture shock moments that you've had or some things that you really weren't prepared for coming to Japan? Well, you know, I, I did a study abroad in Sapporo, my okay. second year of school for six months and gotcha. moving back to Japan uh, in that time, about three years ago, I, I experienced reverse culture shock coming to America. Just the loudness of public transportation, people talking all the time, people just not respecting public space. So coming back to Japan it was a lot of like nostalgia, a lot of comfortability for me. Gotcha. Um, but culture shock is such an interesting thing because like in America, if someone has a problem with something you're doing, they'll tell you. They're, they're excited to tell you that you're doing something wrong. <laughs> in Japan, you have to read the mind of the person. You have to be able to feel the energy like some sort of shaman, hippy dippy bee. And just be like, okay, I'm doing this wrong. I'll correct it. And then the people, their energies will change. And I've experienced that. I've experienced that in the workplace where it's like, oh, I shouldn't do that. Uh, no one's told me though. And that was kind of shocking. What was it like um, coming with the other Jets? Like who did you, or you don't have to tell me actual names, but who did you yeah. really connect with right off the bat? Like how many of, I think there was only like a few that came from Oregon, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, my cohort, 
everyone that I came to the hotel with was all from Portland, like, or had been living in Portland or Portland surrounding area. Uh, so we had, everyone had that in common. And because of our Portland State University Japanese language experience, there were a few other people from our classes, from our class that went. Oh. So I basically, I hung out with them. Uh, speaking of that, like, what was it like um, stepping out of the, of the hotel for the first time? You take a deep, deep breath in and you get that fresh air. And that fresh air just like, it's like opening up a fresh Coke and that first sip I don't know. The first time I had a Coke was just really just exceptional. And it was like similar in that first breath. Uh, what are the COVID specific teaching methods employed in the classroom in terms of games and activities? Well, I came pretty late stage COVID, luckily. So uh, I know before I came, they uh, the teachers couldn't like physically touch anything that the students touch. So they couldn't pass around papers. They couldn't uh, do anything with that. All the students were in their own like little boxed off cubicle in their desk. Um, luckily, I don't have to deal with any of that. So it's just wearing masks, using hand sanitizer. Each student has to do like a temperature check when they get there in the school. Um, and all the windows are always open. All of the windows. And it's f***ing cold as shit here. So it's like, it's it's not. Bring a sweater. It's not. Bring a sweater bring a sweater uh we haven't been doing too much that's like oh no covid because there's such a high vaccination rate here and there hasn't been like any cases on the island at all so yeah so what is your workload like like okay you go to school show up talk with the teachers i know there's like a morning meeting that you talk yeah to yeah it's a stuff. it's like the teachers have this little uh like pen like office pen room, everyone has their own desk and everyone's in the same room. There's one big desk at the front with all the heads, like the, the educational heads, vice principal, principal, all that. And uh, you have the morning meeting that lasts. It's basically just everyone kind of going around making announcements and it's all in Japanese and they're all saying like very like technical lingo. So I, it's more like just kind of listening practice for me. Beautiful. Um, I, I almost feel like, uh, do you remember when you went to work with your parents during like take your daughter or son to work day. Yeah. I feel like that I get a desk and I have to kind of make myself busy and I wait to go to class with the dad or mom, which are the teachers. I don't have much work at all. I have been asked twice to make presentations and that's basically like put words on a slide and put some cool images you can explain with the words. Like it's been basically <laughs> what I've been doing since middle school. Which Amazing. Is so funny. And I actually want more work. So yesterday or uh, the other day, I asked one of my teachers if I could grade the test that they all, the, all the students took recently. And she was so thankful that I took that time to do that. And it was basically fun for me. Like, oh, that's not right grammar, zero points. The workload, not so much. How, how big is the class that you teach? 20 to 30 students per class. And I'll be in... Uh, uh, there's three years in junior high, first, second, and third. Uh, first year has uh, two uh, gummies or two uh, classes, and the second is the same, and third is the same. Uh, but there's also uh, special ed classes for kids with disabilities. So okay. I'll go to those as well. And that's more like a one-on-one -on -one situation Got of it. teaching English, which depending on the student can take a lot of patience or can be really fun. Uh, yeah, yeah, it can be, it, you, I, I think uh, total my school has 179 students. The biggest junior high here has 300, but outstandingly, one of my, the other ALTs is working at a middle school that has two students. Two? Two, two students, they're twin sisters. They're waiting until they graduate and then they're going to shut down the school. That's like some next level Japan... <laughs> right there goodness gracious so how feasible is it to like mingle with the locals honestly every a, the basic assumption if you don't look japanese the basic assumption is you don't speak a lick of japanese you don't eat japanese food you don't know anything about japanese culture Beautiful. that's the assumption the moment you say one or two words in japanese 
the whole world changes for that Japanese person. Like, they're like, oh, I can talk to this person. They're actually a human being, not just like a poster of a foreigner. It's like, once you give that konnichiwa or that konbanwa, it's like things can start to talk and they're generally, generally interested in who you are, how you got here and what you do here. I think it's relatively, if, you're, if you feel comfortable putting yourself out there, that's the most important part is you have to like be willing to step outside of your comfort zone, talk to a stranger, be like, how are you doing? How is your night? And I really have never gotten like a bad response from somebody. Uh, but what would you say, you know, it's Friday, weekend's coming, you got some time off. What are you, uh, what, what, what are you doing this weekend kind of deal? Like what is, what is yeah. free time look like for you? Um, free time, you know, it depends on the weekend and the week I had just before. Like, uh, this past weekend I went to Fukuoka and I went out every night. I partied like a city boy I am, uh, and it was great. But this weekend I just, I have cleaning to do. I have laundry to do. I have to get my life in order and you just don't have time during the week to do that. So I'm prioritizing that sort of stuff over the weekend. Uh, although I do have that. ALT Friday curry, which I'm excited for. And then Saturday, our one of the ALT's girlfriends from Kyoto is coming into town and we're going to go party. Well, I mean, that's pretty much all the questions I have for you. And do you have any final or closing words to tell everyone? I would say, you know, coming to a new place like Japan, the unbelievable world of experiences there are here, it's easy to get like lost in the intensity of it all and just be like i need to do everything every weekend i'm going out every weekend i need to do something i need to constantly be busy but if you just take the time to sit and enjoy yourself and sit in the place you're traveling in and just kind of enjoy yourself not having to go to the next place and the next place another club another bus another club you don't need to do that just kind of you're young you can take your time you can enjoy yourself just enjoy yourself you know gotcha. i think that's my my wisdom yeah Thank you, Gabe, so much for allowing me to yeah. interview you. I hope that uh, your time in Japan treats you well. And uh, maybe you we'll so see much. you sometime down the road, huh? We will, okay? We will. I'm excited, okay? For sure, for sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be talking to those those prime ministers. going to let my friend Jack in right now. Yeah. Yes. Get me, get, eat an entire KFC chicken bucket for the... The Yule season. Yule time. You will you will log chicken bone. <laughs> oh my gosh. Alright. Definitely take it easy. Thanks, man. See you later.